This is Chuck Rand, uh, interviewer for the Old Bristol Historical Society. I'm here at the Riley home in New Harbor. We're here, it's uh, February 19th, 2020. I'm here with uh, Reg and Betty Riley, who we're going to be interviewing. Uh, I'm going to be sharing some of the interview with Bobby Ives, who's a co-president, and Russ Lane is the videographer and also co-president. So. Thank you for letting us into your house and disrupting everything. Thank, thank you for coming. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask each one of you, what's your full name and when and where were you born? So, Reg, if you want to start. Reginald Lee Riley, born in Damascotta, Maine. What, what's the birth date? February 24th, 1931. Okay. I am Elizabeth Ann, spelled with an E. Do I know? And you were born where? I was born in Augusta, Maine. And you don't want to just, you want to give your birth year or? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> April 27th, 1932. So I'm going to ask you about your early childhood, just briefly, and family background and um, so, tell me about your parents. Uh, we'll start with Reggie. Uh, when and where were they born, and uh, uh, what was their background? Well, I, I, I presume my father was born in New Harbor, and my mother probably was born in Montville, but I'm not sure of that exactly. Yeah, and what were their names? Geneva and Carl. Okay. And Betty? My... Uh mother was born in, I believe, in, could be uh, Chamberlain, Maine. And uh, my father was born in, I assume, Pemaqua Beach, and you know, I don't really know. And what were their names? My mother's name was Aline, and my father's name was Lincoln. Lincoln, do I know? I can't, I can't remember the middle name. We took a quick tour of your back rooms there and we heard something about the Civil War and could you kind of talk about that? Well, that was my grandfather who was a Civil War veteran. He, he walked into town to Pemaquid Beach. Now, he must have gotten a ride from I believe down in uh, Belfast or somewhere. He had, and I, I've lost, I can't find out what the connection was. Uh, he came from, uh, where did I tell you? I don't know that I remember. I think he well, was, anyway, he, he was he, a, a Civil War veteran of the Massachusetts Regiment. So I, I don't really know that much about him because he came in came into town and married my grandmother. Uh, Reg, what did your parents do for a living? As far as I know, a retail grocery store. And how long did he do that? He started in 1928. And that was the beginning of Riley's store? Yes. Okay. Before, previous to that, it used to be a stable. And I believe uh, just previous to him taking over, it might have been a, might have been a retail outlet of some sort, but way back it was a stable. It was also a stable uh, in our parking lot, where our parking lot is today. There was a stable there years ago, quite a famous stable. I presume it was, uh, it, that burned, I believe. And I suppose it was a stable for people who came to town and stayed in the one, uh, the, uh, I guess it's Juanita House across the store. That building, I think it was a hotel years ago. And Reg, wasn't there a blacksmith shop there also? Uh, I can remember, yes, a blacksmith shop there. Uh, but I think Merlin Carroll, who lives the first house going down over the hill by the church yeah. on the left, he lived on the left, and he had a blacksmith shop out where the telephone company is today. Old, there was an old building there, I remember as a kid, and 
I can remember, I think it was him that had the black shirt. So. Yeah. Was it not that blacksmith shop that sent the spark up to burn the church steeple? I don't know that. I don't know. Molly Hanna told me that. Yeah. We have pictures of that livery stable, that, that whole area. We got Do you really? Three or four, uh, three pictures of that. Really? With, with carriages out front and people out there. So, uh, and I, I'm trying to, for the life of me, remember the name. We even have the name of it, but I can't remember. Yeah, there's a picture it. there of the church and hush and buggies. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you, wow. That's wonderful. Uh, what did your parents do yeah. for a living? My father was a lobster fisherman. Then he fixed uh, TVs for a while. Wow. And that was about it. And my mom had a little shop in the garage where, and now Bob uh, Ganang. Ganang has, has that house. And uh, my father's name was Lincoln. I can't remember the middle name. Why now? Any brothers, brothers, brothers and sisters? Oh no, no, I'm a, I'm, I'm an only child. Didn't I turn out great? <laughs> <laughs> what you call a spoiled brat, I think. Yeah. But tell about your father. How many siblings did he have? Uh, in his family, there were eleven, nine boys and two girls. Yeah. This. The girl lived. Uh, one of the girls was a World War One nurse. And my father had a barn behind the store he built some years ago. And he used to have teams, a team of hostages that worked in the woods. And eventually, late years, when he got out of that, he was also, also had the store. He moved the building up between the store and the library, and that's where she lived and had a post office for a good many years. So did uh, your father's Brothers and sisters, they work at the store. No, they, they were all they were scattered everywhere around. A lot of them lived in town, but some of them were lobstermen. Uh, one uh, kind of made a career of the service, Lois. Could uh, you list their names? Can I? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bill. James. Rupert, Kyle, Philip. Everett? Everett. I'd have to look at the picture to, to really name, name them all. This, the picture is in that room oh, yes. of the boys. Right. And the girl lived here. Refresh. The other sister lived here in, in the uh, old homestead up here oh. uh, on the, by the 129 and 32 meet uh -huh. across the road there, the red house. Jane Ryan, uh, Jim, uh, Jane, uh, what's her name lives there now? Jane Riley? Jane Riley lives there now. Right. I remembered that. Right. So growing up, did you, have, did you have chores around the house? No. How about you? I used to go. I don't think so. That's okay. I used to stay nights with my grandmother who had the house in the middle of Snowball Hill. And I would go down when it got dark and stay the night with her because she was alone, and then walk back home and get ready for school. So that was my high school and, and part of grammar school. I did that. So you, so you grew up in a in Augusta. No. I was born in Augusta, okay. and my mother was in the hospital in Augusta and had me, and then they, we were living uh, not quite into uh, Gardner in a house, so they just took her by ambulance, and they got partway home, and she said, where's my baby? They'd left me at the hospital. <laughs> so you can see I had a good start. <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> oh, she's told me that more and had so much fun over it. 
So <laughs> eventually you ended up in Bristol. Yes. Well, we were Bristol, they were Bristol people anyway. I, I don't know why, the, why they were in Augusta. I can't really tell you. Yeah. But yeah. must have gone up there. Maybe my father had got work or something there for a short while because they were renting a house. And uh, that's when I But you were raised on Snowball Hill in the Brunel house. Well, not... Oh. Not really, oh. because you know the house across from uh, the entrance to the what's his name? He builds boats over to the beach. John Stalecki? No, on the corner. Gus no. Kanetsky. Gus. Oh, yeah. We lived in the house opposite there. Then the next house that we lived in was a house that was taken down um, up where Paul, I mean, where Mike and Mark Chase have built the big building there. Oh, yeah. There was a house there that we lived. And then uh, my father built a house over on the other road. So this must no, be boring not for you guys. No, no, no. We not always lived. Uh, yeah, it kind of bounced around, I guess. Now, I'm going to ask about your early schooling. I'm not talking about high school. I'm talking about if you can remember grammar school or anything like that. Did you, uh, what was the name of the school you went to? On New Harbor Hill, where the fire station is now, it used to be a schoolhouse. And it had the, all, all the grades up to the eighth grade. And it was called? Mavushan Grammar School. How about you, I went to Pemberton Beach School, and there were also all grades there, all ages, from from uh, to the eight. Yes, to the eighth grade there too. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you have any? What were your? Who were your friends at that time? And and what were your favorite? Did you have a favorite teacher or any kind of favorite class? Or I had. There were four of us, all the same age, that lived in Pemaquid Beach. And uh, I think Paul Chase was the only boy at the time. Mark and Mike's father. And, uh, we, but there were quite a few older kids. I think the Bigfoot boys, Oh, yeah. I'm not sure whether Roy, I know Kenny was, mm -hmm. and Ken, uh, the other brother, mm -hmm. the one that was drowned, I think went there. So it was a funny, it was a funny uh, setup, really, I think. And I used to ride to school. She'd pick me up where where my father built the house on snowball on the top of snowball there, and. Uh, she would pick me up in a f old Ford coupe with a rumble seat, and, <laughs> and I'd ride. It's a, it was a two passenger, so I suppose she felt sorry for me walking to school, so I had a ride. And Betty, was it the school that's on the top of the hill there where Mar Marlene yes. Lasnica has yes. her? Yes, but, but I have been going to go in the school for many years. Yeah. And I, I thought, no, I won't disturb the people. And I thought, somebody said they had kept it the way it was. You should definitely There's go in. nothing, nothing I did this summer. Oh, good. And I was so disappointed. Oh, dear. There's nothing left. Oh. Everything was taken down. Mm. The, uh, the chalkboards, I mean, even those weren't left. I, I, I suppose, you, you know, so you'd never know it was a school. Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, it brought back memories, but they were good ones. And that was so different going in there. Did you but, have electricity when you went to the one-room schoolhouse? Yeah. Well, I think so. Okay. You know, I, I couldn't. I couldn't say, but I'm I'm sure we must have. That would have been in what 
30, 36 or 7. Yeah. So it must have been. Yeah. I think yeah. yeah I think there, there would have been. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a favorite teacher during that time? Uh, no. I, I had uh, one teacher who was uh, Rossi's grandmother, I think. Wasn't it, Ross? Yeah. And, uh, and, but I, I think the, the teacher that gave me the ride, of course, was, was a favorite. It was, you probably knew her as, well, what was his name, Kania? Uh, Nathalie. Yeah, Nathalie yeah. Kania. Okay. Yeah. Wow. She was... Uh, and I don't remember of any others besides the two. Right. But. So, Reg, uh, your classmates and a favorite teacher at Mavusha. I never probably, as I got older and got into high school, I never was much of a student. I probably disliked school. Uh, I saw a picture of you on the basketball team. On the baseball team. Baseball team. Yeah. yeah. Baseball. We used to play baseball in, yeah. in high school. Had a baseball team. Okay. William Kempton. Yeah. Your, your wife's right. uh, grandfather right. was, the, was the principal of the high school. He also was coach of the base, baseball team. Right. Oh. <laughs> and of course, we never had a gym. We never knew what basketball was because we never had a gym. <laughs> So that's the only sport that we, the school really had was, was base, a baseball team. Yeah. So I remember uh, playing in that, and I think out of that team, there may only be two of us, two, two other ones besides myself still alive. Oh, okay. I think they're both yeah. chickens. Oh. Was that a good team? We used, to, we, we used to think we were major league, probably. <laughs> Uh, I, how, how big uh, we used to, Richard Carter, who had something to do with the University of Maine, was a classmate of mine. And he brought me in a, ske a schedule of the baseball games that we played. I think I, we only had six or eight games we ever played. <laughs> and he had down what we won and lost on a, for a record for, a, for one season, I remember. And uh, what position did you play? I pitched. Oh, my God. Used to think I was top of the line, you know. <laughs> Left, left-handed or right-handed? Right. That's wonderful. And of course, I never was a good pupil. I went away to school for a short while. They sent me. I guess I was so bad they were going to send me. They sent me out of town. <laughs> sent me to Hebron for a while. Oh really? Oh wow. Yeah, I think I was there a couple of weeks, maybe. Tell them what made you come home. Yeah. What, why were you there just a couple of weeks? I got homesick. Oh, sure. Why? I was yeah. a baby, yeah. and my father sent me a box of Hershey bars, <laughs> and <laughs> I think that made me more story. homesick than anything. And I can remember I went out for football because I never played football in my life. Yeah. And they said that uh, I, 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 was, I kind of liked it uh, for a few days because I was only there a short while. And it said uh, that the coach said, those who have played football at one end of the field and those who have never played football at the other end of the field, I think there was one other guy myself <laughs> <laughs> who had never played football in my life. And then um, I think I went there, Junior Gilbert. Oh, yeah. He, he was a Marine here in town in World War II. And I think he tried to get in. Dick Riley up here, Rupert Riley's son, graduated from Hebron. Oh. And uh, I think Dick went up with us. A, with Junior. Junior tried to get into Hebron. They were taking uh, GIs after the war, you know, into school. And they didn't accept him, but they accepted me. Wow. Because <laughs> I, was, I was the GI. I was still in high school. Mm. Oh. And my father sent me a box of Hershey bars after I got there. I remember I, 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 I just had to come home. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, during, during your high school years, or your, anyway, your partial high school years, um, you were working for your dad at the store? I worked part-time when I was still going to high school, yes. Okay. Yeah. And Betty, when you, went to, you went to high school. High school, here. Bristol. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you, uh, did you have any 
any kind of uh, classes that you like there? Or, uh, I don't or know. Did you get kicked out as well? Or? Uh, no, no. <laughs> she should. She should have. <laughs> Here's what she did. See my finger? <gasps> wow. She left a mark on me back in high school. It's still there. Was this during Can your you courtship, or was see the blue? A, yeah, I see that. That's lead. No. Oh, did you hit him with a pencil? She hit me with a pencil. I, I warned him first. I, oh, that, <laughs> I said. I, I, I think it was typing class. I was sitting because behind he, her. He would go like this on my oh. shirt or sweater and yeah. keep doing it. And I said, please don't do that. And he kept it up. And he kept it up. And I went like that thinking I probably wouldn't hit him. Once I got him in the knee. Wow. <laughs> and he still did it again. I don't know whether the finger was first or the knee. Oh, okay. <laughs> so was this, were you pulling on her because you and were I, romantically inclined towards Betty at I, that time? I don't know. I don't think he liked me. We must have been high school me. sweethearts, I would say. We're I, still here. Uh, yeah, there. How wonderful. But I went to the teacher yeah. and I said, please, either move him or me because I'm not going to. I, I enjoyed typing, and yeah. I, I was paying attention to what I was doing. And he evidently didn't have any classwork to do. So, that Betty, was... when did you start going out with each other in a romantic relationship? Uh, you know, I don't know. Reggie better fill us in. I can't remember myself. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so forever. <laughs> it seems forever. What year were we married? We've been married 60... Nine years coming up or something like that? Wow. That's a seven. A huh? seven. So I think it's 69 in April. April? Well, 69 in April. Well, if we could count. That's wonderful. It would have been. Uh, we have a daughter, I don't 70. Know if so I, was we, I hadn't better say 71 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> I think we're not the average ones to be in. <laughs> <laughs> Red, you almost died at a young age of a cerebral hemorrhage. Yes. What year was that? Betty remembers. And he and was 40. 40 years of age. So that would have been... Uh, I laid in the main medical for 33 days. Oh but how I know the main, what main, how many days it was, was because Betty got a bill for her meals, and I think it was $3.00. A day, oh, she oh had to pay for meals, and she got a bill for ninety nine dollars. <laughs> so now, it, Betty had never done any work in the store. There I was, laid up in the hospital, and she used to come home and sit at the desk at the store at night to do, do the book work, you know, yeah. cash up and so forth. And she would, at the first of it, she sat there and cried. She didn't, didn't know how to do it because she'd never done I it mean, before. Oh yeah. I had. And I left it in her, in her lap. So I mean, I had always. I had always. I had uh, been. Not. I, yeah, I hadn't done anything. I had been to a no. grocer's meeting. I was a director of the Associated Grocers of Maine. Oh. And I had been t to a director's meeting, I believe, and I'd come back and come home with a terrible headache. Oh, wow. And my Be Betty knew I was bad. She turned right around and took me to the hospital. Wow. And my father died with one at 49 years of age. Oh, wow. So it's been a little... That's amazing. Did that change your outlook in life in any kind of way? One thing I remember about recuperating from the cerebral hemorrhage, I came back to the store and I was putting ice cream in a case. Yeah. And I told my doctor here in Damascata, Dr. Morrison, I think it was. I remember he was a great, great guy. Had a good connection with him, I, I don't really and I was telling him about come, come, what I was doing at the store, putting ice cream away, and and uh, I said people kept coming in and talking to me, and I was getting frustrated. He says, he says, let the ice cream melt. <laughs> That's nice. So I have found out a few things about the store since then because it's been. Well, you were 40, so I would have been 39. And I've cashed up most of the time, except when we've gone on vacation. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I and remember the I, I love it. Isn't that what, 
Are you still doing but, that, Well, I did have an accident okay. and cut my head, and I've, I have two concussions, okay. and I don't think very quick. Okay. I can't, yeah. I can't, sometimes it, I just can't say what, what is necessary. And it, it was a job getting back into it to count. You know, I would sit, wouldn't I? I'd sit and look at the money and, and you know, wouldn't really know what to do. Sure. Making like bank I'd always done night. for years. So you've been so. doing that for over 50 years. Yeah. And Reg, you've owned it for... My father died in... 75 years? 54. What? No, no. Good many years. Yeah. I've been there. Your father died at 49. 49. And my and mother, then I supported my mother. Thought of. And then my poor mother and father yeah. lived in that stinking apartment over the store all their life. Oh, wow. wow. And I feel so bad about that. Oh, huh. You know, so guilty. And when we got married, he come down here, had this lot. My mother and father were tending through their life to build a home here. Yeah. And he built Betty and I a home. Wow. Here for around, I think it was the bill was around $12,000. Wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. So this house was built in the 50s? Uh, I can't tell you that for sure. <laughs> Cheap as it somehow, uh, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I don't think I've ever gone back over life like that and said, no, mm -hmm. this would have been a 50, yeah, right, or this right. would have been, sure. you know, you just scoot on. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Carol Lee was a year and a half, and she is, what, 60? 69. Uh, so... Well, let me, let me, Funny, let me, uh, your, the, your children, uh, who, who are they, and when and where were they born? They were born in Damerscott. Hospital. All, all four, and all three, just, four. Uh, who, who, were, who are they? Carol A. Kirka is married to Buddy Kirka. Uh, Cow is... Well, was married to Sally, and they're together. Sally they're together again. Yeah. Uh, Kim is married to Glenn. Uh, Hodgson. Hodgson. And because uh, we lost the other girl. Before Kim, we lost a baby. Only yeah, it was before Kim. So only that, a few weeks and old. Kim is, Kim is uh, 60, 62. Kim and, and, and Belinda yeah. were, right. I think, in the same class, so they would be yeah. the same age. Yeah, is that Belinda 62? told me about when they were going to high school, uh, high school that Belinda would come up. In yeah, the she morning. always here as a kid. Uh, yeah. With, yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. They so, your wife was raised, always here as a kid. I can remember. They raised yeah. the That's wonderful. Devil. They were good kids. So, but yeah. I made sure that they did know what I expected of them. And now I don't think they do that. <laughs> you know, they anything goes, and if if your kids get in trouble or anything, you know, then you take care of it. I don't know. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me get the relationship back to where you first met each other. Besides uh, the typing class, but did you did you see her before the typing class? And was there a spark no. there? No, I only think I no. think we must have met mainly in well, high school. In school, because she but, was lived at Primmerwood Beach. I lived in New Harbor, and, and no. Uh, no, you know it's. I uh, think I. It seems close today, but probably back then it was miles away. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of activity from one school to the no. next. So you didn't really no. know them. Yeah. No. No. That's I didn't. I, New Harbor was um, another 
city, a town, <laughs> rather, to yes. Pemaquid Beach. Yeah. I mean, we were hicks, I guess you might call us. But loved it. Yeah. Loved, loved Pemaquid Beach. Of course. I didn't need to go to New Harbor for anything. But it's funny how, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden you branch out and go move. But we we had enough to do at Pemaquid Beach. We had swimming, we had roller skating, we had dances at the surf and all of that. So we didn't want for anything. And we used to play, there were four, four of us girls all the same age. And we used to play cribbage, and, uh, not cribbage, uh, bridge. Our mothers used to play bridge, so we picked up on that, had bridge games. And they, we were busy all the time. And you wouldn't think so yeah. at Pemaquid Beach mm -hmm. or anywhere around here, but I think, and I think the ki other kids were Belinda and Kim. They, all, they always found something to do. There, there was the pavilion and all that. And, yep. And, um, there was. Yeah. Eddie, could you ever yeah. tell us a little bit about Flapjack City? Well, they used to call it that, but it's nothing that I ever called it. Where was Flapjack City? I, I don't know. I think just just the beach. Just the whole beach? Just not the sand, not... Just the sand beach, but yeah. the Pemaquid Beach, Can the I, little village. Possibly somebody uh, went to somebody's home and they were cooking pancakes. Could have been at the time or something, and they got a, it, it. They were flipping the I, pancakes I in the fry pan, maybe or something, and it might have become a, come out of that. But I don't know that. But that was the I a never general term that. used for Pemaquid Beach. No, not really. Oh, I, mean, I never that, used it. Uh, I never used it. What, what I've seen is Flapjack City, I've seen postcards that say, uh, and it shows Little Beach and, uh, and the Fish Be Point, that whole little neck there. But you know, I think it was, it could have been out of town people oh. calling it that. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't remember of any of my friends calling it Flapjack City. Okay. Really? Yeah. These out of oh. town people you know do most anything. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I don't feel that, I don't feel that we did that at all. Oh yeah. No, I think, right. I yeah. think it, no, I don't think it was people right in town. Yeah. Okay. You right. know, I think yeah. it was, it could have been probably people from New Harbor. Oh, okay. Some. Oh. Could have been. <laughs> could have been. Different breeds. Because, because sense, you know, yeah, and. And we had bicycles, so we uh, weren't sure. we weren't riding too far. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't believe that that you know we we even heard it unless it was somebody away. Yeah. If you if you gentlemen heard of the word hovel, mm -hmm. hovel. I'm not familiar with that. You're not familiar with that. You mean the the, term, the noun hovel? Yeah. They used to. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't want to change the subject. No. I, I few few people have heard the word hovel. It's a used like they're using it. What I I I remember as a kid, John Woodard, who lives near oh. near Damascot, he used to have a team of oxen. Yeah. My father had a sawmill at Primitive Point down behind the Radigans. And the uh, at night there was they let me one night I remember as a kid come up to Wood Road all the way from from Radigan's across by Jess Hoffman's flat down here to Primitive Beach and right. and over to the hovel which was where they kept the oxen at night it, it was a shack a, 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 it's a sh it's a shacky place, uh, wow. you know, built out of uh, old sawboard lumber and so forth, just a shelter for. Yeah. They call them hoss hovels. I've always heard. Hoss hovels, yeah. Oh, hovels. Name before, but 
hovel is used in a different way. So I'm going to, oh, did you want to Well, say? I was just, uh, just about the whole sawmill arrangement. Could you relate, Betty, the story about your, again, grandfather getting that award uh, for saving the man's life? But he was deceased. He didn't really, he got it, but he didn't get it. He the family it. got it. The family the wife, got it. The oh, wife. The wife had five children. Oh, okay. And that's the picture in there. That's okay. all those kids, but I think the husband. No. And that was when he was a kid, too. Um, but I have letters that people wrote her. And told her how lucky she was because she was getting $25. I don't think it was a week. It's been a month. I think a it month. was a month. Yeah. Big, big bucks then, probably. For, yeah. To take care of five children. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So. Yes. And this was Lincoln Partridge. Yep. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And there were three other Partridge brothers and a sister, or two sisters. My grandmother, my. My grandmother was a sister to, no wait, that was her father. That was her father. And she had Zina, Ziny, uh -huh. and Doris, and Jubin, and I think there was a brother that died. Yeah, I'm trying I to think. can't remember what his yeah. name was. And Do you? Zina married a Chadwick, right? Chadwick. Yeah. 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 Snap, and, that Snap uh, Chadwick? Snap Chadwick. Yeah. <laughs> yep. His name was Ernest. Oh. I think <laughs> Ernest Chadwick. But he was always known as Snap. I believe he was a carpenter, wasn't he? He was. Both of them, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I, I want to, we've, we've talked about your children and how you first met, and, um, and the lead poisoning. By the way, I was taking advantage of. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, she led Keep you thinking on, that. Sort of. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to know, when did um, the store that you took over, uh, did you expand that in any way? Because it seems like yes, I, 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 the store has doubled in size. Yeah, I, yeah. And when do you, when did that happen? I I'm guessing I don't know 54 maybe I don't know when it just when it was. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, when did you get uh, when did you put air conditioning in there? Oh my lord, that's late years. Yeah. Uh, the store, of course, when I was growing up in the apartment as a kid, uh, no such thing up there as inside plumbing. We always had an outhouse out back. Right. And that outhouse out back was, was a good many years before we had plumbing in the store. Well, the schools were, uh, the Pemaquid Beach School had an outhouse. Yeah. Attached to that. I can remember being in high school. High school had a, an outhouse on the back of the school. Huh. Yeah. Wow. The high school up here. Yeah. That's what, what, yeah. what the. That, I don't know what year they might have changed and got rid of that. But, right. Yeah. But I graduated in '48, so it had to be '48 and previous that they had outhouses at the high school. <laughs> so, Reg, you, you. Um, you semi-retired from the store. I know that I see you in there every once in a while. I don't like to think that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said uh, Well, when did you kind of give up the reins, so to speak, a little bit? Well, I used to, of course, I, would cut, I used to cut the meat. Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't know. It's just been recently, you know, it's been five, six years, five years. Well, you haven't cut meat for a long time. Five, five, or, six, five or six years, probably. But you're still involved in the store. I go in every day, yes. usually yeah. around 10 o'clock. Right. It's kind of a habit. I have some place to go in the morning. Some people don't have a place to go. <laughs> and my wife is very fortunate to, that I have a place to go. 
She, she even tells me that at times. <laughs> Reg, so you've been yeah. involved in the store for about 75 years? Full time since 48. Full time since 48. That's... Okay. And previous to that, I, had, I worked in the store, uh, you know, as a kid. Yeah, so it's close to 75 years. Who are some of your friends uh, during, after after you began after forty eight, let's say, that you hung out with or were social Bob, with? Bobby Crook, Bob Handley, Bobby Crook, and I were great friends. In fact, we were great friends with Betty and and Polly, his wife, was we were great friends. Bobby Crook showed Betty and I a good many good times over the years. He worked on the for the boat. islands on the yacht and. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to, when they went to the woods, he would take us on, on, the, on the boat. And uh, we've gone from here to Florida. We've gone from Florida to the Bahamas. To the, uh, not, uh, the Bahamas on that boat. So we've been on the Ireland yacht a good many times. And thanks to the good uh, relationship that Bobby and I, Polly had, and Betty. Uh -huh. And we used to go to Florida a few years back when we were younger. And uh, Bob Hanley was a great friend of mine. And uh, they used to be down there, and we used to play golf together in Florida. I was going to ask, but, did you, were you ever a member at Wawanock? Uh, oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. And Betty also yeah. was years ago. Yeah. Huh. Was that during the 60s? No. Uh, or is that? I give it up could golf. Be, it could I give be, up, yeah. I, I give up golf just it to. back. Back my eyes. It, uh, oh, I, I used to be out playing. I, I guess I was playing. I might have been playing in Falmouth. Oh. Golf when I really, really was playing bad. And uh, I think that's where I might have quit. Now you don't really have anybody to play with. And my friend Bob Hanley's gone. Bobby Crook's gone. Yeah. Bobby Crook and I were, 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 were real good friends. Do you have any hobbies, interests that you're doing now? Um, I have all kinds of them. I think you, yes, I had to move them. I, I have a lot of hobbies. She could show no, you down. Just, she, you should see her. You should see her sewing room before you leave yeah. down in the basement. Betty, maybe you yeah, could tell uh, us a little bit about your store. Well, the library. I mean, it was the library. Mm -hmm. I knew have a library on the hill. I had that little a white building gift shop and uh, had all all of my gifts were hand made like the wooden pumpkins and all of that stuff mm -hmm. uh, but I think and my mother used to come over and work I'd uh, get tired of being there in the morning it was pretty dull mm -hmm. so I'd call and I'd say when do you want to work today mom <laughs> oh I'm all ready now so she'd go over and, yeah. and tend yes. she had a great time doing it too loved it and only one bad time a man changed the a ticket on a I think it was a fry measure thing. So it, I had all, all hand. And you hand ran done. the library for how long, Betty? Oh, I had it, I maybe did it five or six, or, I, I'm not really sure. Oh, wow. You yeah. know, yeah. as you can see, we didn't count yeah. anything, really, by the years or months. We just did it and and I would cash up at night alone too up until Reggie's been going up with me mm -hmm. for the last year or so and uh, my dear dearest friends that were waiting for me to go out if we were going out to eat somewhere or going to do something at somebody's house and I'd say, well, I've got to wait till I cash up, and then I'll be ready to go. So yeah. they would, when I'd go out of the store, they were very good friends. They were in the grass hiding, 
and they'd jump out at me when I got to my car. <laughs> I thought, boy, with you, you guys are my friends, I don't need enemies. <laughs> but, oh dear, we've had good times around here. Yeah. I, I would hate to have lived anywhere else. Wow. Wow. Right? Right. What has provided you with the greatest satisfaction in your life? <laughs> well, I think I've <laughs> I think I've been satisfied with everything I've done or I maybe wouldn't have done it. I don't know how's that sound that's not yeah. the answer to Well, Reggie just pointed to himself and he want to buy you. So. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> No, uh, just, I, I don't have, a, I can't really explain it. Sure. Uh, I guess I've been happy with, with all of it. I mean, you have bad times, but, but I've just, and I, and I love this store because I thought a lot of Reggie's father. And more so than his mother, which I guess is sometimes not very nice <laughs> if you do that. <laughs> but uh, and I, I just I feel good about going up and uh, doing because I wouldn't want to be out front mm -hmm. with people. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I don't mind doing some of the book work, and I used to do the charges, and, mm -hmm. didn't I? Yes, a lot. Betty never of worked in the things, store, but, but she always I don't. The I didn't like. Back. I don't like to be on out behind every man. The, there's supposed to be a woman. <laughs> Rich, what has been the most uh, sa great satisfaction in your life? Well, having gone, gone this far and. Betty and I still love each other, and we have three children. I we mean, have was, we have grandchildren. How could you be unhappy? We have great grandchildren, <laughs> and we have great great grandchildren. So, so that's quite a ways I, to go. Uh, uh, we aren't we aren't done yet, though. No, <laughs> I hope not. we still got a little fight in this. <laughs> Just keep the lead pencils away from her. <laughs> All right. No, I haven't done that again. By the way, uh, uh, the library, speaking about the library on the hill, the white building that's up there now, there used to be different women around town that were librarians there. They would put the volunteer, I suppose. They I imagine they volunteered the time, but I that don't was, know this. When, that was not when I had the shop, though, there. No, that was pre the library Before was the previous. That building was moved from Bristol Mills. They t somebody told me that. Mm, mm. But that was that was great. That was so much fun with Absolutely. all the nice hand-made things. They're, it's be, they're beautiful. Oh, yeah. I I couldn't couldn't uh, get it really enough of them. <laughs> and uh, if somebody would stop, I have a man. Well, I have a knack that's handmade with I don't know how many sets of animals mm -hmm. that's downstairs, and before I closed, uh, I ordered a couple of acts. I thought, well, I'll have those so that when the kids get bigger, they will maybe appreciate it. And uh, when I called to put my order in, he said, I can't, I won't be calving them anymore. Oh, wow. He, he had taken his wooden animals and had them put in whatever they do, mm. resin, or what do they do, I don't know, so that they weren't, they weren't all handmade. They were made from a mold, I suppose. Mm. So, you know, then that took a lot of the fun away <laughs> because yeah. a lot of people were doing that. It was too hard to keep up with it, sure. I suppose. Sure. But you were talking about all your generations of grandchildren and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. One of the great, great things great. of my life 
was playing right down here on this pond, hockey, with all four Riley generations, from you straight through to, I think it was Dylan. Yeah. So yeah. all four generations were sk playing hockey right on your wonderful pond. And oh. you still recall using me for a hockey puck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we have another generation. Oh. Bob, Bob, Bob was, is a very, very slippery on a pair of skates, and he's a very good skater and <laughs> hockey player. <laughs> Slippery. <laughs> well, we want we once he to wanted to make a, a zamboni for the pond to smooth the ice. We did. It was one of the great highlights. We, we run a hose from the house here. The pond, and I made up a zamboni, and we pulled it around with towels <laughs> to, to smooth all the ice out there. It was a great day. Mm -hmm. It was a fun time. <laughs> no, we have two great great granddaughters. I know I must know what the answer is, but have you seen an increase in the, the your store patronage over the years? Over the years, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And do you have people that um, come by every summer and use your store and? Hope, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one, I had another question about, and I, when I I lived on New Harbor Hill in the 70s at one point. Well, I don't know how they uh, Pendleton's. Um, really? Penimans, Penimans. Up over the You store. did live up over oh, the store? Oh, up over yeah, Dewey's? Dewey's? What, with Belinda? No, 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 just I was, uh, I was there. The state put us up there. I see. But um, what I recall is, and I, and I, and maybe this was something uh, that always occurred, was it seemed to me that uh, some people had tabs and that they would settle up at the end of the summer or... or My father always had charge accounts. Okay. And I had them for a good many years. And Betty and I decided that it was probably time to get out and it certainly was. Mm -hmm. But it was a very a hard... Work. It was a very hard changeover because a lot of people couldn't accept it after be charging for so many years. Mm -hmm. And we had problems collecting. That was a problem. Uh, one man who used to be a fisherman and he, he used to uh, run a bill all some all went along. When it come to he was uh, purse seining. When he used to he'd be a purse seiner uh, in New Harbor here. He came in. I remember at my fa this was when my father was alive, and I think it was five hundred around five hundred dollars he owed, and he came in and threw it down at his feet. <laughs> It made but, him pick it up. But charging is, was probably one of the biggest, one, a very big move for us to do, and, and I'm, I'm awfully glad we've done it. Because right. charge cards are so easy today, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Reg, I have to tell a story on you. When we came off of Monhegan Island, and then off of Louds Island, and then moved into the parsonage here in New Harbor, I came up to the store because I'd always done, because I was an islander, I'd always charged everything. Yeah. And I remember saying to you when the first day that we were there, I bought some groceries, and I said, would it be okay if I had a charge account here? Yeah. And you said, no way, I'm sick and tired of these charge accounts. <laughs> really? You can't have any charge account whatsoever. <laughs> he and was then fooling. that evening, I got a call in the parsonage, and it was you. Really? And you said, oh, I didn't know you were the new <laughs> minister in town. Of course you can have a charge account. <laughs> so I've been very grateful for that. Really? For 50 years. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, oh, I, I, was, actually, I don't remember the answer. That was awful. Uh, but I, I got the call over at the parsonage, and you said, Reverend Ives, I didn't know you were the new minister. Of course oh, my you didn't that charge account. Oh, I dear. probably gave too much of my life to the store. Well. As I look back, I, I, oh, I everything, everything, you know, almost everything I had, uh, I, I put that. Well, uh, yeah, you did. A lot did. of long hours, mm -hmm. seven days a week. Of course. I mean, it took, and we started closing. Maybe when the kids were sick. Started ages. closing a day a week, I think on Sunday or something years back, and then we're back open now. Is there any question you had hoped that we might ask you or stor some story you wanted to share with us? 
Anything in particular? I, I, I want to share everything with you. <laughs> if you find well, it interesting. I don't think you've asked what did we do for fun oh, yes, good. growing up at Pemaquin Beach. Yeah, well, that was one of my questions, but, but I, I mean, I didn't ask it. But the, yes, what was fun? What was fun? Well, uh, we had swimming on the beach. We had roller skating. But we had one thing that we used to do that we used to be a man that lives where uh, the boat builder is. Okay. Can't remember his name now. Gus Connect. Gus. Gus. And he was a, he baked bread. And. Arthur Turkey. Maybe something oh, else. Arthur, Arthur, Arthur Tookie lived there oh, way know. back when I lived at the Pemaquin oh, Beach. Okay. So I was probably, well, I was in school, so I may have been eight or six, seven or eight. Okay. And we, we used to go and, uh, on Halloween and we'd trick or treat. Not, yeah. not harmful, but we'd always do something. And we got a flower bag and stuffed it with uh, grass and, f and put a rope around it. Mm -hmm. And we'd hide in the grass by, my, by the corner house there. And when Arthur, t we'd wait for Arthur Tookie to leave. We knew when he left his house to go deliver bread. Mm -hmm. And we left the bag in the road and he would stop thinking it was what we thought he thought was a bag of flour. And I, met, I don't know how many times that man did that for us. <laughs> and, and you know, we never knew, we never thought yes. that, of course he knows when we're just having fun. <laughs> and we'd pull a bag with, with the grass, and the, it was a flour bag though, but he'd stop every time, get out, and then, of course, we'd pull the bag away and laugh. And that, that was, we had more fun doing that. Probably we did it two or three years. Yeah. And we, we always thought, he just thought it was flour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah, we've, we've, we had some fun. We used to, this uh, son of the tar that was killed on the saw, I think it was, we used to holler up his drain pipe. Oh. <laughs> that was, <laughs> he didn't like it. It was very noisy inside. <laughs> and then we'd run. But I decided that I wasn't going to run with the gang, so there was a little apple tree, and I thought, well, I'll climb up this, and he'll never see me here. So I was the only one that got caught. Mm -hmm. Not too good. But we we just had fun things we used to do like that. Before we close, I'd just like to say thank you so much for what you've shared with us. I wish I but could also talk. for being such good friends and also for supplying the food for feeding the people of New Harbor for over seventy five years. What an amazing contribution you've made. But it's a two way yes, street. You have. Well, of course, yeah. but also I know a lot of the history of that, and you are such honorable people, and it's been a real joy to hear yeah. some of your stories. Well, it's... So I can't add any more to that. We used to, as kids, uh, we used to get out of school and go on the point over here across the pond and build a fire at night and oh, skate yeah. after school, you know, and play yeah. hockey as yeah. kids on the pond. Yeah. Nobody I always had a fire nobody going. Nobody does it. Nobody skates now. No. There has, I mean, for kids, folks from your place, yeah, uh, come down and put the rink up, yeah, and they've had, they haven't had any skating really to. to it, we get to, all the it's weather. One of the poorest years for skating. Yeah, I think we've yeah. Had. And uh, I got the the lights, uh, but, but Crooker put the light up course, some years ago. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm surprised it still worked. Yeah. But he put one the year. lights up for us. There's a light we in the would tree go down here. At four o'clock, as soon as Reg and Betty heard the puck against the boards, yeah. they'd turn the lights yeah, on. Yeah, I could hear the puck, <laughs> and I listen to that puck now. Yeah, I, they, yeah. they've, they've played some, well, two not or three much. times, but not yeah. much.
down now. Mm. And uh, I get up and turn the light on, and then we get ready to go to the store around 5.30. Yeah. So I look and see if there's any cars or anybody on the pond before I go out and turn the light off. <laughs> Some nights there might be somebody there, or I think there's somebody there, so I'll leave them on until I come back from the store. Well, you're so good. Work at night. But it's been kind of a fun thing. You know, it's, it's just been yeah, it was fun to skate on and to cut ice on too. Helping, helping somebody out. Yeah, they yeah. used to cut so that they could cut play ice. hockey used late to be in the evening. Uh, ice. What they to do. Yeah. Reg and I have shoveled yeah. that pond many times. Yeah. Yep. So thank you so much. It's yes. just an honor and a great yeah. joy to hear I, I, I wish. It's a two-way street here, guys. I, <laughs>